Welcome to In My Bag with Backpack Jeff, where we connect with ordinary people doing extraordinary things. Y'all, I got a super special guest here with me today celebrating Women's History Month. We are celebrating New Women's History Month, a young, inspiring young lady. Real quick, before we get into it, I just want to read her bio off of the back of her book. And yes, people, I said her book called Dad Gone. Iris is a proud Washington, D.C. native, a rising star. Did I say Iris? Iris. Yes. Okay. All right. She going. All right. She going to correct me. Eris is a proud Washington D.C. native and rising star. She takes pride in being a community activist by continuing to work hard to eliminate homelessness in the District of Columbia. As an 11 year old actress and model who has slayed runways across the United States, including New York Fashion Week, Kids Fashion Week, DMV, DC Fashion Week, Atlantic City Fashion Week, Fashion Walk Against MS, Indie Fashion Week, Ethnicity Brand Fashion Week, and Charlotte Kids Fashion Week, just to name a few. As a recipient of the Maryland Youth Fashion Week Rising Star Award, this pillar of positivity remains focused on her goal of becoming a future Academy Award winning actress and America's Next Top Model. When she's not on the runway or stage, she strives to maintain her honor roll status in school. She also enjoys traveling, trying new restaurants, and spending time with her family. Ladies and gentlemen, Iris, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm very good. It's good to see you. Thank you for coming on and being a part of this. I appreciate you for that. No problem. Thank oh. you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us, how old are you now? I'm 11 still. You're 11 still? I okay. Am. And um, tell us what it is, like, how did you get into modeling, into fashion? Where did the inspiration from that come from? So I started modeling at the age of nine, but before that, I will always watch TV shows such as America's Next Top Model or just looking up things on YouTube and that sort, which is how I wanted to model. That's uh -huh. how I began to want to model. And I just started doing fashion shows such as New York Fashion Week and started to travel more and more to pursue my modeling career as it is. Okay. Um, what's been the most exciting experience for you in this modeling career? Definitely traveling. Um, going on a plane was one of the most exciting things because I know that was actually recent. I know that I've gotten far to be able to go on a plane to get somewhere. Right. I believe my first time was Atlanta. That was a couple months ago. Okay. And it was fun. It I was fun. It. Listen, look, you're you're way further me uh, than, than I am in my poetry because nobody has flown me out. I've had to drive a couple of places, but I don't think nobody has flown me out or I've had to go anywhere where I had to fly. So that's amazing. And just to be 11 years old, I think um, you are certainly uh, writing and creating history at such a young age, and I'm super proud of it. Uh, I'm super proud of you for being able to do that. Um, so tell me when you first started, uh, you, you said you were watching America's Next Top Model. Is there anyone that, uh, that inspired you on America's Top Model? Actually, of course, Tyra Banks as it is, uh -huh. but the winner of the first cycle, her name was Adrian, and she was my favorite out of all of the cycles. And I still watch it now. And she was my favorite because she did not look like a model. Okay. She didn't have that model she was more of a tomboy and okay. models aren't you don't see her as a model but when she had the makeover and you could really see her growth it really surprised me so she's definitely an influence nice that's amazing so is there someone from like a uh, top model that you kind of you know say um like when you look at their outfits do you say hey look i want to do an outfit like that or that's something that i want to do what is that like when recently, actually, I was just thinking about this. Recently, I finished watching the season on Netflix. Okay. I believe it was cycle 20 or 21, and it was Boys and Girls. And her name was Renee. She wore this outfit, and she was hanging upside down. And she, it was like a bad outfit. It was one of the last episodes. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I love the outfit. It was so pretty. Doing a photo shoot upside down definitely is scary, but... It was she was like a bat, so she had the outfit and looked so like a bat kind of, and she was like hanging on cables. No, she it was her feet were up on something. Oh okay. Yes, All right. and it was a purple outfit that I really liked. 
it was pretty simple, but I could definitely see myself doing that in the future. Okay. All right. I, I like that. You you have you have vision. Um, you're very smart. We're gonna get to the school part um a little later. Um, being an honor roll student and just some of the things um that that you're taking in as uh, you know becoming a, becoming a young woman. Um, but uh, so in regards to like the, the the modeling, okay, we know some of the people that you uh, that you've looked up to. Um, where do you see this going for yourself? So we know, I know in the, um, on the back, uh, in the biography, you know, you talked about, um, wanting to win several awards. Have you always wanted to do that? Like, were you always this outgoing? Yes, actually. I've always been an outgoing person, but when it came to modeling, I think it has brought out my personality even more uh-huh. on the runway and off of the runway. Okay. How do you stay humble when doing something like this? Because you've, you've achieved a lot of success already, even at 11 years old, numerous, uh, you know, fashion shows. How do you stay humble and how do you stay grounded, you know, and not get a big head? I actually, I just stay focused because you can always be better than what you are currently. Mm -hmm. And that's my, that's what I strive to be. I strive to be better than I am currently, which definitely keeps me humble and focused because I like to stay chill. I don't like to be big headed, I guess you could say as well. It's just something that I'm very used to. So I like to stay focused as Uh well. So before modeling, I was always really focused, Uh really smart, and I was really focused. And now that that has changed, I've still maintained being smart and being focused. That's amazing. Um, that that's oh man. I being being a girl dad. Um, I'm super just like proud of this moment. <laughs> Even though I've only met you once, I'm like man. Um, who are some? Are there some of the younger um, women like on TV shows? So like I love watching Blackish. Right? Have you watched Blackish? I have. You have the the little girl who plays Diane on that show. Like she's like my my favorite. She's hilarious. She's. My fate, I watched Grownish for two seconds and I went right back to Blackish because yeah. for a second I thought, okay, maybe it'll be fun. But then I went right back to Blackish yeah. and I watched it over and over and over. <laughs> I, I literally watch it over and over again too. And like, she's just so fun. I follow her on, uh, on Instagram and, um, I think she's just like, you know, she, she's a good role model to have, you know, um, someone that you can look up to and, someone that you know you can just kind of inspire to say you know what i i imagine at some point you may meet her one day especially if you uh you know as you keep uh, keep going and keep succeeding in what you're doing um let me see uh did you so have you just done like modeling did you ever do like gymnastics or anything like that i tried dance and i it wasn't for me and uh-huh. that's about it I couldn't find what I really wanted to do until the age of nine. Okay, until the age of nine. So when you were younger, did you ever, like, uh, play dress-up with your mom's clothes? Like, do you have, like, some pictures or anything like that of you playing dress-up? Unfortunately, I don't have pictures, but I would definitely go to my mother's closet. You would definitely go to your mom's closet all the time? I can now actually fit her shoes. Really? So I'm still in her closet, yes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay all right um now are you comfortable walking in heels i am actually what's the what's the biggest heel size that you that, that you were able to walk in i believe it was three to four inches three to four inches so that's so far i don't i'm a little frightened to try anything else because okay. i don't know if my ankles are <laughs> are the are prepared right for a bigger for, size for a bigger size okay <laughs> all right i got you um so you're you're 11 years old you're you're pretty tall you you're just on your way to accomplishing um such amazing things and that's one of the reasons why i wanted to have you on here because when i met you uh i met you uh you were at a vendor at an event um and you were uh selling this book and it's called dad gone um and i just kind of want uh, i wanted to uh ask you you know what's the what made you say, you know what, I want to write this? Because um, not having your dad there, but, you know, it seems like you're still able to push through and you're still able to, to go on and achieve amazing things. What was the inspiration behind this? Definitely my progress so far. It was just around mid-beginning of April. 
And I've gotten pretty far with my modeling career. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be able to show other children that they did not have to sit around because they didn't have a father figure. Right. And I wanted them to know that it wasn't their fault whatsoever mm -hmm. that that father figure decided to leave or not be in their life in general. I would say the inspiration was definitely my mother because she she's come a long way. Mm -hmm. And she's definitely inspired me in so many ways. So definitely my mom. Okay. So tell me about the relationship that you have with your mom because it's... It, it, it's it's you don't see a lot of m good strong mother daughter relationships but it definitely seems like you and your mom are like this team of like your mom is definitely your biggest supporter um talk to us a little bit about that relationship with your mom what are some of the things that you've learned from your mom i've definitely learned how to how to be independent definitely okay. because how to be able to rely on yourself and mm -hmm. not anybody else i've her our bond is definitely a really good bond and i think that's because we are both really really close and we have a lot of things in common not only that she's an inspiration um therefore i think we have changed each other's lives actually i think that i was second born and my sister We've always had a close bond, us three, and then my brother came along, then it was us four. So I think our bond comes from not just family, mm -hmm. but the things that we have in common, just such as where we like to eat and things of that certain. Right. Something else that I would definitely say grew our bond or can't put us close together was definitely just her being a single mother mm -hmm. and her being able to teach us things on how not to rely on certain people mm -hmm. and how to be able to be independent yeah definitely is where our bond comes from I, I, I think, and, and you know what, I think that's a strong, uh, I think that's a strong thing because my mom is a single mom, uh, was, well, my mom was a single mom of four growing up and, you know, I took a lot from my mom and, you know, I saw how hard she worked and it was easy, you know, it, it would have been so easy for me to, you know, act out and lash out and stuff like that. But, you know, I always wanted to help my mom. I always wanted to, you know, grow like if there's any stress that I can take off of my mom, I always wanted to do that, you know. And the easiest way you can do that is just by being a good kid, you yeah. know, being smart, being uh, independent, you know, um, you know, be, being bright and then, you know, pursuing what it is that you love. And I think you found what it is that you love. And um, it's so amazing to see how your mom is backing you and pushing you. Um, uh, how is how's your you you said you have an older sister? Yes. Um, is uh, is your older sister into modeling or anything like that? My older sister's more into technology. She goes okay. to Duke Ellington for technology. Okay. And our bond definitely strong. At first, we were we definitely would argue a lot. Uh huh. I don't know what brought us together whatsoever, but it came together, and nice. she's a really good sister. That's good. That's good, good, good. So what's what's something that you can say um, that you learned from your sister? Because right now, you know, she's in a field, a tech field, where, um, you know, it's not a it's not a high populated woman field. So you know, with her trailblazing that and going into tech, what's some of the things that you've kind of taken from your sister's journey? She is definitely the person who taught me the most how to be focused mm -hmm. because she's always been a really, really smart girl. Okay. And, of course, we're all smart, but she was super-duper smart, and I definitely learned from her how to keep cool, stay humble, and remain focused at mm -hmm. things. That's good. That's really good. Um, now, your your little brother... Talk to me. Talk to me about your your little brother. Sometimes I I know with my with my little brother, um, we used to rough house and stuff like that. Like you know, if you're you're a model, how do you you know how do you handle you know with with being with your little brother? My little brother, his name is Christian, and he's great. He's but great. he is the only boy in the house, uh -huh. so he's different. 
I'm not used, of course, to having a little sibling, but a boy at that. So, but he has a really great personality. And when I model, he knows I model, definitely. Mm -hmm. And I spend so much time with Christian. Christian is always in my room, always in his room. So, (laughs) our relationship is definitely similar to me and my sister's relationship Uh because we all have a huge bond. Again, I don't know what that bond is yet whatsoever. Right. But of course, it's growing. Yes. You know, it's, it's growing. So, what's what's something that you want your little brother to learn from you? Um, He's already very independent. So, something else that I would definitely say is how to maintain focus and to whatever you want to do to mm-hmm. be able to do that. Okay. So you, uh, it it sounds like being focused is something that is that is important to you, and it sounds like you're super focused. Um, where where did that come? From? That that came from mom, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, that's that that's amazing. Um, like, I, I'm trying to figure out how I want to ask this question because I'm just, like I'm I'm so amazed at at you, you know, just being elect. Like I don't feel like like sitting here talking to you, I don't feel like I'm talking to an 11-year-old. Like I feel like I'm talking to like up here and it's and I'm not one of the people like I'm not so big-headed to where I don't think that I can learn that I can't learn something from you. Um and it definitely seems like focus, you know, is something that is that is just key to you. And I have this saying uh and it's uh, uh it's called it says uh, faith focus finish. You know, uh, have faith in yourself, uh, focus on the things that your heart desires, and then finish everything that you do with the same attitude you had at the start. Do you have any favorite quotes, like, you know, as you're, you know, going through school and as you're going through life or anything like that? Yes, I do, actually. Something that I say to myself when I'm having those negative moments is to be the best version of yourself. Because when you worry, worry about other people and what they are doing, it tends to take off of your focus for yourself. Mm-hmm. So what I do is I, I try to strive for the best for me. Mm-hmm. So definitely to be the best version of yourself, but still remain calm and remain focused and remain humble. Okay. But to be able to, how do I say this? To be able to strive for the best, definitely. Yeah. That's, and, and that's that's a positive thing and that's a good thing. So as you're um, uh, as as you're kind of you know moving forward, you know, with being an author, do you see yourself writing another book? I do actually. Okay, what's the next book going to be about? If you can tell us, though. I don't want to say too much about it, of course, okay. because you know so some you do, secrets have to be secrets. But I do plan on writing another book. You do plan on writing another book? Okay, all right, excellent. Congratulations to you on your first book, and congratulations to you on your next book. I can't wait to support you um, and, and get that next book as well. Um, so uh, school and, and this in this day and age, right? I've talked to a lot of adults and talked to them about how they've adjusted during the pandemic and during COVID and stuff like that. How have you adjusted during the pandemic? Because I mean, this was a crazy time, you know, during this pandemic. How have you adjusted during the pandemic? Definitely. I've adjusted getting out of my comfort zone. That's okay. definitely a way that I have adjusted because I had to adjust because I went to I have to go to a whole new school. But again, I started in the pandemic in fifth grade. But I had to switch schools with people I totally I didn't know at mm-hmm. all and work that I didn't prob- I probably didn't wouldn't get. Mm-hmm. And that is something that I had to adjust to and that was because I was not used to it at all. I wasn't too used to change. And I had to do more things out of my comfort zone, especially when fashion shows and photo shoots started coming back Right after a couple of months. I had to adjust my shoes, of course, mm-hmm. adjust the way I walk, adjust my poses. So definitely how I had to adjust was a huge It was thing. huge? Okay. What are, what are some of the... Um, so when... Do do things ever get difficult for you at school or going to school? Sometimes, yes. But, again, I do have connections with my teacher, mm-hmm. with my teachers. I have two of my teachers' numbers and all of my teachers' emails. So 
if there's any problem whatsoever, I I am able to let them know whether I text them or email, and they shoot an email right back. Okay. So not many problems now. Okay. Uh, do you have a favorite teacher? I do. His name is Mr. David. Why is Mr. David your favorite teacher? He's the most calm. He stays calm, cool, and collective all of the time. Okay. He's definitely why he's my favorite. He's also very understanding. Uh huh. He also came to my book launch. Okay. So. All right, Mr. David. Yeah. yeah that's nice. <laughs> cool. Calm. What subject does he teach? He te- he's my math lab teacher. He also teaches math, but he's my math lab teacher. Okay. What's your favorite subject? Math. Your favorite subject is math. Tell us why your favorite subject is math. I love numbers, but not only that, because math is so complicated. Uh-huh. And I like a challenge. Yeah. Um, not saying that reading and writing isn't a challenge, but math is very complicated. Yeah, it, it is. I, I like math because it's absolute. There's no gray area. It's like black or white. It either is or it isn't. Um, when's your birthday? July 25th. Shut up. You're lying. No. That's my daughter's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching my daughter two years from now, y'all. Uh, July 25th, for real. Christmas in July. That's what I call my. That's what I call my well, daughter's birthday. In a way, yes. Christmas in July. Yeah. All right. Have you ever heard the saying Christmas in July? No, I have not. No, you haven't heard of that. You haven't heard that. Well, Christmas obviously the 25th, but Christmas in July. Um, yeah, it's a thing that old people say. Um, <laughs> it's a thing that old people say. You got to worry about it. Um, all right. So your favorite subject is math. Um, are you into Are you into reading? Um, are, is there any any books? What's the last book that you've read? I've, if you can remember, I'm still actually reading a book for school. Okay. I forgot. I was. It was just on my head. It was. It's about her name is Lena, and she's in a hometown. And she needs to get out of the hometown because it's not like Earth. It's not too similar to Earth. Okay. And she, right now, where I'm at, is she is, well, I think it, yeah, the book just ended. She's being chased by guards because she did something illegal. Okay. All right. Um, oh, it was called The City of Ember. Yes. It's called The City of? Ember. The City of Ember. Okay. All right. So, um, is it difficult to, how, how do you balance modeling and being an honor roll student you're not just a student you're an honor roll student as well how do you balance the two definitely not only staying humble and focused but also being able to follow up with my teachers okay as well that's how i balance them i also balance them by remembering so certain things such as how to stay humble and how to stay calm because when you forget those things they're not as balanced anymore Mm -hmm. something can go hot you may treat something better than the other Mm -hmm. or you may feel like something else is not as important so i definitely remember that both of them are important and remember to stay calm and to stay humble okay i love it i love I, i love the way that you think um so when you're uh, when, when you're walking this model, you, when you're walking this runway, right? How did you learn how to walk a, a runway? It took time. It definitely took time. I think I learned by practice, continuing okay. to practice in the hallway, practice in the mirror. And I remember my godmom told me when I almost when I first started, she mm-hmm. said. And I was in school, and she told me to practice in the hallways of school, and that's what I did. I had a couple of people, of course, ask me what I was doing, but it paid off. <laughs> I can imagine. It paid off for you. It that's did. good. Yeah, that's that's good. Yeah, say, and you, and you know what? That's that's one of the things where sometimes we get uh, we get a little bit embarrassed, like when we're practicing something and other people don't understand what we're practicing or why Definitely. we're practicing it. Um, like, I, like being on like a football field or something like that, like it would just be me and I would be running routes and people would just be like, what is he doing out there? And like, if they don't understand it, they, they don't know. So right. when they see you, you know, walking, you know, like, you know, walking, walking like a model, they're like, wait, what is she doing? Um, so they, they don't understand it. And especially with a lot of younger kids, they don't see like they, there aren't many kids your age that are into modeling, that are looking at models, you know, that are doing it uh, as often as uh, as often as you are. Have you uh, have you made some pretty uh, some pretty good friends from 
modeling that you uh, keep in contact with? I don't keep in contact with many friends, but I recently got um, a a friend. I can call her a friend. A friend's number. Her name's mm-hmm. Sasha. I heard, yeah, her name's Sasha. I got her number because we recently did a photo shoot together. Okay. So I haven't made really, really good friends, and I think it's because I, I'm not the type of person to – automatically say hey okay how are you doing my name's Eris. i'm more of a layback and i'm more of focused on what i'm there for okay that's probably why i don't have as many friends okay because i'm there for one reason and one reason only i'm not there to purposely make friends but of course i will talk to you if you talk to me first but i'm not the type of person to Kind of put yourself out there a little bit Definitely. more introvert. Definitely. Okay. All right. That's good. Um, okay. Uh, so I, I I love it. So modeling, um, a, amazing student, really good relationship with with both of your siblings, really good relationship with your mom. Um, what would you? So in any any kid or something like that, like have you ever uh, came across like bullying or anything like that in school? Have you seen? Have not you dealt with it, but like have you ever seen it or anything like that? I have, but it wasn't extreme bullying. Mm. It was more of discrimination. Okay. So I guess you can say bullying. Okay. Um, how how do what what can what do you think adults can do to help kids um, deal with like bullying? And then uh, I'll ask you a follow up question after that. Kind of from a perspective of kids my age. Definitely to remind them of their worth because a lot of people forget their worth when they're being discriminated against or bullied. Not only that, but to remember it. Mm -hmm. Don't kind of brush by it and make it seem like, oh, okay, well, it's a phase everybody goes through. Mm -hmm. It's really life-changing when you go through bullying. I haven't really went through bullying, but seeing people bullied, you can tell that it's really life-changing. Right. it makes you upset, but you can't really do anything about it when you're in that position mm-hmm. and you're in that perspective of actually being bullied because you know the person that's bullying you is definitely probably older than you or mm-hmm. bigger than you, which is the reason why they feel like they can't do anything about it. Right. So definitely to remember it and remind them of their worth. Okay. Yeah, that's, that, that, that is amazing. Again, just, just, just the way that you think, I'm really just... Uh, amazed at you know the the level in which you're thinking um so it being women's history month um are there any women that you would say that are there any famous women or women in history that you look up to or that you admire like a i mean obviously everyone loves beyonce obviously everyone loves like michelle obama who are some of the people that uh, like that that you look up to one of my number one people are definitely Taraji P. Henson because she's also from Washington, D.C. Okay, come on, and Taraji. being from Washington, D.C., not a lot of celebrities are from here. Mm-hmm. And she sets an example. She's definitely an inspiration. Yeah. And she has a great personality. She does. And she's, she's really fun. I feel like she would be fun to meet, right? Definitely. Yeah, I feel like she would be really fun to meet. Have you been to, like, California, like, West Coast uh, at all? Not that I can remember, but okay. I probably had when I was younger. Okay. Any plans to go over to, like, California and do some modeling, uh, anything like that? Yes. I actually want to go to Paris to do modeling as well. I want to go a lot of places to pursue my career. Okay. Um, tell me tell me your favorite experience doing a photo shoot. It was recent, and it was... Um, with the mag for a magazine cover. Okay. And uh, actually, uh, two actually, it was with the actual same producer. Uh huh. But I got into a dress, and it was a pretty long dress. But I I had a stylist, and the stylist put things over my dress, put things under my dress, and it did not look the same. And it was really really pretty. Yeah. And I liked it because I got to do it by myself Mm -hmm. and i got to show my actual potential okay 
my other one was my most recent photo shoot i believe and it's it, that was because i was with somebody else i wasn't by myself but it was such a beautiful setting uh -huh. it was but you couldn't tell the setting you wouldn't know that it was inside of a mall really okay so is your do you like shooting outside or do you like shooting inside I like both, actually. Okay. I did an outside shoot, and it was in the freezing cold, mm -hmm. but it was so fun. Okay. It was really fun. It was in New York. I did a photo shoot, and it was freezing. I woke up early, and I got my hair done, and then we went out, and it was by the water as well, so okay. it was pretty cold. Yeah, so it was definitely cold then, if it was by the water. Yeah, but it was fun. I like to keep the idea in my head that I'm doing it for a reason, mm -hmm. and I'm not doing it just to do it i'm doing it because that's something that i want to do in life which definitely keeps me going okay um so what can we expect next from you so you you said you want to actually you know what i um you said you want to get into acting. have you done any acting yet i have i've done a couple commercials my my favorite one that I've done, I can tell you this, was a Planet Word Museum commercial. It's a beautiful museum. Of course, it's not open because of the global pandemic, mm -hmm. but it's a beautiful museum. The technology is off the roof. Really? It's amazing. Okay. Um, all right. That's, that's amazing. So I'm actually um, meeting um, a – well, I'm actually going to be interviewing a um, a – an acting coach uh, on April the 17th and I definitely want to I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna make sure that I connect you two because uh, he, he's he's really big uh, ABC uh, BET uh, he, he, he done some work he actually just had a, uh, a movie premiere um, down at uh, down at RFK Stadium I would love for you all to connect um, and I think you know it's, it's all about connections it's all about resources it's all about networking and so if there's anything that I can do to you know maybe just kind of put you on his radar and say hey look you know check her out check what she's doing um, you know that I think that would be a good look for you um, so you've made it to a couple of different magazines how did it feel when you first uh, found out that you were published like that you were a published model it felt great because not only people on my Instagram would see my progress, but also people that I didn't even know mm -hmm. as well. So knowing that it's outside of my platform, it felt great. It felt great. That's good. So um, so in, in regards to, um, you know, where, where you're going next, um, I really want to – so typically what I do is um, I like to um, – uh, go in my bag and ask some questions about you know some futuristic stuff um but i don't i don't have them i don't have them today but so what i want to ask you is i just want to ask you a couple of questions from the ones that i remember um what are going to be some things that are going to be in the pictures you're going to take in 2021 something that's definitely gone going to be in the pictures are more of being uncomfortable, something okay. that I'm going to take charge of, is more stepping out of my comfort zone even more than I kind of am currently. Mm -hmm. That's all I can see for right now. I'm kind of taking it on as I go. Taking it on as you go, and that's I think that's a smart approach. Um, I think you you know where you're headed. Uh, you have you have a clear idea of of, of where you want to go. Um, and I think, you know, just watching you, you know, a along this journey, I think it's going to be something that a lot of young girls um, are going to be able to take. And like I say, even older people will be able to take to see someone who's so focused and who's so driven at such a young age. Um, I think it just speaks volumes. And um, I'm super excited to be able to, um, you know, watch your journey and to kind of be a part of this. Um, believe me when I tell you, uh, if this is your first time being interviewed, it's not going to be your last time being interviewed. <laughs> Uh, but you're super comfortable. Uh, you're, you're, you're super just humble. Uh, and you can tell that this is actually what you love to do. And um, I just want to say congratulations to you on all of your future success. I'm definitely going to be watching uh, from a distance. Uh, and if there's anything that I can do um, to support you, I want you to know that you have that you are literally building a village of people who are going to support you. Um, and, you know, we want to see you win. You know, we uh, adults, we have to, you know, start pouring into 
um, young people and what it is that they want to do. I, I know I, I had a um, I have a saying, you know, uh, kids, kids dream, uh, kids uh, dreams are just wildly um, amazing at a young age. And it's only when adult an adult puts a cap on that dream. Do they stop dreaming really big? And I don't think no one's put a cap on your dream. I think that um, you just dream big this whole entire time. And now you are literally seeing um, all of the things that you want to come true. And I don't think that I don't think you're going to stop. I think it's going to be something that you're going to continue to uh, be very successful in. And not only that making sure that you are staying um staying focused on in school and you know doing well in school i think it's something that's going to go a long way for you so uh, i'm super excited um how can people uh how can people follow you how can people um you know see some of the stuff that you're doing uh in regards to like fashion and modeling and stuff like that how can we support you you can see most of it on my instagram my instagram is eris underscore aubrey that is where I mostly post my modeling, my community activism, my acting. And I have another page for my book, personally. I do post some of my book on my actual page, but I have a different page for it. It's erisabusey.author. That's where I give more information about my book. And I do have a Facebook. My Facebook is erisabusey. And that's about it. Okay. So, really quick. You said you saw you said community activism. Where did the community where did the desire for community activism come from? Definitely just everywhere. I I'm not a big fan of seeing people without need their needs. Mm -hmm. Just everywhere. I I can give you an example. Um, okay. I was picking my sister up from school and she and I was in about fourth grade. We were picking her up from school, and right across the street from her school was it was her old school. Right across the street from her old school was a CVS, and outside of the CVS there were two homeless people. And I wanted some snacks from CVS, of course. So we go into CVS, and I get some drinks. I get two drinks. I didn't get any snacks. I I, I really don't know why, but and I gave the two drinks to the homeless people, and that's. Not when I began my community activism, but that's when I realized that it was what I wanted to do. Okay, that's amazing. So, what is it that you what is it that that um, that you want to do? Like, is it feeding the homeless? Is it like giving back to less fortunate kids? Is it anything specific in community activism that you want to do, or just a community activism as a whole? Community activism as a whole, but definitely as well as not only doing that i want to focus a lot on those homeless kids because they are they have a great ability to have a future mm -hmm. they they haven't gone through half of their life so okay. far and i i really want them to be able to pursue their dreams and yeah. what they want to do and be able to find that dream mm -hmm. so definitely homelessness for kids okay now, um, do you um, do you volunteer or anything like that? Are you into like volunteering like over the holiday season or anything like that? I actually love volunteering. I I did this one thing. It was mm, a couple months ago. It was in 2020, and we were making food bags. Okay. And we were. It was just a drive, and people were driving up, or homeless people were coming up, and just receiving the food bags. It was a great feeling. That's. That's when I also started to realize that that's what I wanted to that's do. That's what you wanted to do. All right. That's amazing. Um, thank you for, for, for coming and, and doing this. Uh, um, I, I know for, sh for sure you're going to be a, a woman in history, and you're going to be one of those young women that, that we talk about, um, you know, just like a Taraji P. Henson. Um, I'm, I'm super excited, again, to watch your growth. Is there any final words that you have um, that you may want to say, any words of encouragement you may want to give the people before we let you go? I would want to say to strive for your dreams, and that is because things possibly may not be looking good for you currently, but you, the best that you can do is be yourself and be able to strive for those dreams that you wish to have, and also to keep your head up because you never know what's next, even if you know what's next. There's always something that may try to stop you in getting be to be successful 
and I just want you to make I want you to be able to go over those bumps in the road and be able to succeed in your career of what you're doing. And also, I would love to thank you for having me today. Oh, I thank you for it. all the words of encouragement and tell your tell your daughter I said, "Hey birthday twin." <laughs> um yeah, that's about it. Again, thank you for having me today, and I hope to connect with you again soon. Yeah, absolutely. We we are definitely going to connect soon. Uh, I have some uh, I have some other things that are coming up. As you know, what when I go into schools uh, and do speaking and stuff like that, um, I want I definitely want to be able to to say, hey, hold on, you know what? I, I want this young girl to come and speak as well because I think that you have a bright future in speaking and motivating other people um, just to kind of you know. Um, pursue their dreams and pursue the things that they want. Um, so again, I thank you for taking the time to come and be, um, in my bag. You are certainly a young lady who is in her bag, um, for sure, not just financially, but, um, mentally, emotionally, uh, spiritually. I, I love your energy. Um, again, it was, it was very easy to say, you know, I wanted to have you on the podcast immediately when I saw you, um, we are doing, uh, we're going to be doing some amazing things here coming up as the world kind of opens back up. Uh, and I definitely want you to, to be a part of it. Um, and, and, and in any, in any way, shape or form that you can, um, y'all, this has been another episode of in my bag with backpack, Jeff, you know, I'm always in my bag.